Me ever ready, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. What was the most surprising thing you learned about yourself during your battle with cancer? That all of a sudden there was a fulfillment of strength to face it. Take us back to the moment when you first felt that something was wrong. Well, to be honest with you, I didn't feel like anything was wrong. Normally, every two years, I'd have done a mammogram. And on, unfortunately, that year in 2021, I did a mammogram. And when I went back for the results, the nurse called me and she was speaking to me. And she says, I have a disc so that you can take it back to your doctor and have him to view it. And, you know, because we see something, but we're not sure what it is. Fair enough. Um, it never panicked me then, but I took the disc and I went to my doctor and he blew it and that was where he said, you know, Miss Henry, since you're having early stage breast cancer. What was your first thought after getting this news? What's the first thing that came to your mind and who did you tell first? Hey, when you hear that news, man, the first thing flashed across your mind is that I swear and um, I was panicked, I froze. And during the process of freezing where the doctor was saying this to me, because whether it's early or late, cancer is just cancer. And um, you know, tears start rolling down and I was saying to myself, my kids, my grandkids, what am I gonna do? You know, how they are gonna survive if I should, you know, this thing should just take on over my entire body. How am I going to process all of this? How am I going to say it to them? But um, after, you know, when I got out of the room, I sat down outside, I made a phone call to my spouse and I said to him, look here, I was just told, you know, that it was cancer. And he said, pause for a minute on the phone and then he says, Lenny, you're good, you know. We're going to beat this thing, man. And that was my first way of looking at it to say, yeah, well, at least somebody's in my corner right now. And then in the evening when I reached home, the kids were the ones that I told and some of them was like shocked because not knowing them vibrant mother so up and down and full of energy and everything to come and hear that she now has early stage breast cancer. It would definitely never sit well with them. But they all showed strength and I appreciate, you know, all of what I've been through with them and this cancer thing. How would you describe the level of support that you received? The level of support, trust me, it was strong, especially from home. Um, when I said it to my, my extended family, my sisters, other families on the outside, you know, they were there and their support was extremely, extremely strong. I had 100% support from home and from family members. Um, and a few persons here before it was exposed that I had it because persons like Otis, I would never stop calling his name, his, his soul rest in peace. He learned of it through one of our friends here and, you know, he called me out on it and he was saying to me, boy, Miss Linney, don't worry yourself, man. It's early stage, you have a late stage and you know what you're going to do? You're going to fight this thing because I am fighting this battle myself. So don't make it drag it out. Don't make it get you in any way. You know, make you lose in anything. Just work with it. Take it and face it and do what you have to do. Because it's a fight against life and you have to do this to win this battle. And um, what brought me though to face it more and to realize that I had a reason to speak about it was the day Otis died. And even that with the day that we had the morning that we had the session up on the 11, the 12th day conference room on the 11th floor, and the way I was tearing up inside, we know because every morning I was out as I reach as my reach a work one time Otis was there through the door. Miss Lindy, all right, you know, I'm just always checking in on me, always checking in, you know. And it was what I so appreciate, and nobody else in the ministry knew but him, apart from the other person that had said it to him. So, you know, when um, when that news of his death came and I realized that this is what Otis was talking about, you know, how am I going to do this? Who is going to be there to walk in? But it gave me that strength to speak out 
at that meeting in the morning. And believe me, I never knew I could have faced it so great. That strength alone pulls me to a point where I tell myself that I'm strong, I can do this because Oti said he can do it. So you know, with God's in the best, you must can do this girl. And the beauty about it is that once I've exposed it to the ministry, the amount of prayers and calls that I got from persons within the ministry, oh God, it was overwhelming. And I appreciate it all. But persons called the phone, even another person that was affected with it, she called me downstairs on the fourth floor and we talked about it. And she says, this is no giving up stage. And I says, I have no reason to give up. You know, this is my fighting battle now. And I've taken this head on, so I know what I have to do in order to minimize this thing spreading any further than where it is. How was chemotherapy like for you? Was it hard? Oh, yeah. I have lots of moments like that, believe me. There are moments when I'm home and I can't even get up out of the bed to come to work. And I have to just call my supervisor and says, I am not training when it's like your entire limb just gets so weak. You don't even, you can't even move your foot off the bed. You just have to lay there until it passes. And it sometimes takes a while. It sometimes takes a while, but chemo is everything wrong. But it, you know, it's everything right also. But um, with the strength of the Almighty and the sort of the friends, they come with the family back there back in you. You realize that you just have to go through this thing and fight it as much as possible. What motivated you to push through and to get the treatment that you really need? My current motivation, I would say my family, my kids. Because every day they are there and every day, even up until now, even the fact that to do radiation, they are there. And um, they have motivated me in so many ways, you know. And it makes me just love them more every day, believe me. What do you want others to know about your journey? Through the whole baby chemotherapy, everything. Ah, that you know, it's a it's a life changing thing for you. And um going through the process is never an easy one. But the fact is if you be true to yourself, embrace yourself, stand strong, because that's what I had to do. I had to tell myself that. You know, this is just a myth. It will, it will go away eventually. But um, the strength, just, just develop that type of strength and you, you, you know, source that strength from families and friends and go through this thing because trust me, you're going to need all the can from every person involved in your life. You know, I've heard from others who have gone through treatment for cancer and I've heard that it can be a very tough experience. Can you walk us through the treatment? What was your experience and what is your experience like and what kept you going on your hardest days? All right, um, to be honest, nobody wants to hear that they have cancer, none. And it's not something that we bring on to ourselves. It's not even sometimes our lifestyle because some of us live the healthy lifestyle, but yet still there's something there that is you know, work that is actually taking over. So for persons who may have been going through the same thing or have, you know, gone through it, look here, the best medicine to it all is when you speak about it, talk about it. Every person you can sit and talk to, question other persons about it because the most you, the more you can talk about it is the more you can face it head on and know how to accept it, embrace it and deal with it. So I'd advise persons, you know, when when you're going through this process, don't keep it to yourself. Don't lock it up inside. Just find some group of persons or prayer group, any group you can find in order to speak to them. Go through your prayers, do this and continue doing, your, you know, just continue doing what you normally do. You're exercising, you're eating, whatever. Just do it. Balance yourself and just get this thing out. Um, Linibeth Henry. I've known Lini for over 10 years. I have known Linibeth now for oh, a little bit over a year. Lini, Linibeth, my Lily. She has been like a mother to me. 
um people person loyal jovial Lini Beth is the voice behind the telephone when you call and even in spite of her going through this entire ordeal whenever you call you can hear that she is a true professional even when it is that she's feeling ill you would never know because she never shows it i pass lily daily lily is that person that gives you that encouragement the the the, the spirit that she possesses only allows you to be joyful gives you that feeling of only being joyful because we as individuals know exactly what she's going through but yet still she acts like she's fine each day is here lily will never complain lily beth has always been one of the bravest most courageous persons i've ever met she speaks about it at ministry events. She speaks about it one-on-one. -on -one. If you're heading out to lunch and you see her on the steps and you're telling her how you do, she'll quite easily tell you, oh, I'm, I'm going to take a treatment tomorrow or something like that. Knowing her with um, that serious disease, she always seems to be happy, never a dull moment, cheerful, always laughing whenever she's at work we are always like you know work family nothing seems to bother her in addition to all of what Lenny Beth is going through she has always been someone that encourages you to stay positive she keeps positive and she encourages everyone around her on a daily basis to continue to be positive she has shown grace, she has shown grit, she has tr shown true strength during this entire ordeal. Each day I would pass her, I would stop and I'd admire the way how she answers the phone and say, oh, wow. I'd then sing to her, she's the lily of the valley, mm -hmm. just to put a smile on her face, knowing that she's dealing with something that many could not have managed to deal with. I've had many opportunities to speak with Lini. And, and encourage her. And she has encouraged me because the openness with which she shares, is, it's, it's obvious that even though it's a traumatic event, it's something that she has used to help her build her faith and build her courage and encourage other persons so that whatever obstacles you face in life, know that Lenny Beth has faced something that has been devastating and yet, she has come through it with flying colors. So Lily, I advise you to continue encouraging us and let you know that we are here for you whenever you need us. Myself and the entire team, we're behind you throughout this entire journey. We want to encourage you to stay strong. If it is that at any time at all you feel like you can't really hold it together on your own, just understand that the entire Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation team is behind you and the customer service team will always be here to support you. Lini, I just want to encourage you on this journey and encourage you in your salvation and in your grace and tell you that you have been a strength to us all. Thank you. Ah, thanks to them. <laughs> oh, wow. In the hit it, trust me. <laughs> I didn't even know that there were so many persons looking on. But I'm glad that I could offer that strength, but they didn't know how much that the strength was pulling. I was pulling their strength in order to go through this, to really maneuver this, you know, to be on top of it. Oh God, I so thank them all.